Of course, King went on the T side. Back to the way we were on the first map. Another choice by them, which means Mouse Board's got the side choice, and they chose CT. No, not surprisingly, Speedy already going to push up inside the tunnels at B, and he's got problems as soon as he rounds this corner. Little does he know, as that first flash comes out, he dodges it accordingly, still manages to pick up one, which is pretty good considering yep. the situation he was in. And the rotations have come over as a result as well, so this isn't too, too bad yet for Mouse Sports. In fact, it's quite slow from Kingwin after that initial duel. And they may have to reconsider, but they're going now through lower three players. They trip over each other a little bit, are down the tunnel already. And with that smoke out in front of Fox, they'll be able to work in toward the bomb train. And the nade from Scream makes things a lot better in the terms of manpower against them because Mouse Sports lose one more. But Gobby's now brought back Michael Ailey, and the bomb's been planted, but they're so far away. And this is one of the things with this inner site is that if you can duel them and manage to push beyond where you plant the bomb, it is just that much harder as it's a labyrinth of trains and alleyways you have to cover off. Scream doing a task. It's going to be King win five pistols now in a row. As you said that, that's quite interesting. The fact that Speedy pushed up and managed to get a kill, he must be quite lucky. We were feeding quite lucky with that one. He should have got taken down straight away without any response. But they got their first pit kill, did the smoke down lower ramp. I think they were trying to bait out the grenades. They knew they took up with the vision away from the CTs. So that actually was quite cool from King Win. They, they didn't force it. Most of the time we'd see them just get straight in there, but they waited, bought their time a little bit, and made sure they got in successfully. Bomb went down, and it was pretty simple for them from there. Went down to a two on one, which they cleaned up. But of course, Mouse Sports replies straight away. They have got the scouts out, and they will be trying to find a kill. That's going to be Chris J. We saw him do amazing work of it on the last map, will he be able to recreate the same magic we saw this time? Now they've actually heard the scouts being fired. Kingwin just need to slow it down a little bit. They can do pretty much exactly the same round as they did on the pistol. Do a smoke down to lower round perhaps. That'd be really good for them. Just get, in, get the numbers on and the, they've only have one kit to actually retake the site with. So aim at the game Kingwin right now. Get that bomb down and see what they can do with it. But Dennis somehow finds a shotgun kill on terrain towards T-Spawn. He's pushed the Ivy area and that's a big kill to get. That's really weird how uh, Rain didn't answer back to that one. But there we go. 5-4 in favor of Mouse Boards. As they work up inner now as well. We've seen eco rounds be contested. We haven't seen one be lost yet. So the anti-ecos have been scary and hairy, but still carry? Yeah, that sort of works. Sort of works. They still get the uh, rounds is what I'm I get essentially trying to say. And as we can see, it's starting to look that way again. Oh. But as I say it, the commentator's curse comes out and now we've got it. The double scout pays off. Mouse Sports back into it. The God B pays off more. Like he got a three man of a 5-7. That was crazy stuff from him. God B. God B. That was really, really strong round. And this happens time and time again. They always force it, but the time they get it, you can't really argue with it. The scouts prevail, and now that forces King with no bomb as well. They will be on. It looks like they are going to go for the force buy. Armor's being brought up. Tech nines. They have got a smoke grenade as well. Perhaps could do literally the same thing again. They've got they've opted for inside twice in a row. What are they going to do this time? You can see a lot of the players gathering up towards that main top. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, we've called a pause in the next round, but something peculiar has just happened. Hmm. And Kingwin's saying thank you. I assume someone crashed. Let's keep this more. They do have Ebot running, so they will be able to match medic this quite quickly. But it was called a stop by Dennis. That was brought. DDoS. Yeah. So interestingly, Kingwin's got the issue that we all fear. They called the stop, so this should actually, when it goes to resume, go right back to where it was. It actually just pauses out the whole server rather than just an in-game pause. So this isn't too much uh, to be concerned about where the score's been reset here. This will this will go back where we were. Yeah. DDoS is still an issue, apparently. It's of course it's an issue. Are you kidding me? Well, like, it, you, you can't let protect any yourself. any salty motherfucker out there that's betting skins involved in the game, yeah, you're going to get DDoS. Yeah, but... Because I mean, they care about their little in-game currency and they just want to be a troll. No, I mean, that the fact is that there are ways to protect yourself. Oh, absolutely. That's I agree with that as well. The players yeah. need to take it upon themselves to do due diligence in, in avoiding that VPN, getting off Skype, programs exactly. that limit IPs. That's all yeah. I meant. I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, I'm not upset. You look very angry. I was a little angry. <laughs> it's a little pathetic, let's be honest. And not only that, it's uh, and apparently it's with Scream in specific, but not only that, it is actually, and this is going to become more of a thing, not to get too political here, but mm -hmm. this whole internet bullying and internet conduct policy is going to become more and more serious as time goes on. And eventually oh, yeah. people are going to be 
given massive, sure. massive fines, potential felonies, and criminal acts. I'm for pretty these sure types of things. DDoSing is a felony, not necessarily a player. I don't think that counts. But if you take down a website, for example, oh yeah, hundred percent, yeah, 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 absolutely. So that's it's a it's a, it's a very big. But you move you could do. argue this is a business. You could argue this is a business, and therefore. There is loss of income. There's damages that are done to sponsorships here, viewership. Yeah. Obviously, we've got something like 40,000 people. You could argue that that's a demographic and a, and a frequency reach that, you know, marketing relies on. So you could argue the same thing, technically. Get a strong enough lawyer. Depends how much you want to spend. I want you as my lawyer. That's the worst decision you could have <laughs> made in your entire if, life. We'd have a good time, though. Go out on a blaze of glory. It would be fun. <laughs> it, would be, it would be Saul Goodman where he just comes into the courtroom with a giant spiel and makes a big yeah. elaborate scene and then it, it, the judge just looks at him and goes, you're an idiot. And I go to jail. And I go, you're right. Send him to, <laughs> send him to jail. I'm an idiot. I agree. Yeah. Well, okay. So I can't really remember. Okay, it was one, King went to the pistol round. Mouse Sports answered back. I assume we'll be coming back to that stage at 1-1. And it seemed like King win force ball with Tech Nines. Um, I don't think they'll be able to do much with those. I guess their best plan really is to try and get a bomb down. They bought one smoke grenade. Smoking off the lower ramp to inside could be a thing, but I think I saw them running towards the, uh, the outside bomb side. Maybe they've got a little set piece, smoke off one of the, the tracks, get out with a flashbang, see if they can cause some chaos. Obviously, the scout's going to be out there. Maybe if they That's can... the best Canadian you've said all night. Is it? The scoot's well, going to be out. The scoots. <laughs> scoot out. But that's about all we have right now. We can see the players. Who's going to be missing? It's going to be Scream that got affected quite badly from that. So he should be rejoining any second. And uh, hopefully we can get this one underway. 1-1. One, one. This is the third map, of course, for anyone just joined us. It's going to be, if King win take this one, they will be taking the series and going through to the first group of the PGL. And uh, Mouse Water will actually be going out. And uh, that will be quite an upset, I would say, considering what's going on. Though. I think King win still are quite an unknown factor. They're quite unstable. The fact they went from Dream at Valencia great performance from them but they lost their coach after that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. you think okay is that everything reset for them all the hard work now has to go back and so it seems like even without their in-game leader the coach tonight they've gone 2-0 up pretty convincingly 16-5 16-7 versus mouse sports you have to credit where credit is due they've done pretty well yeah I, I think that this map again we've said it time and time again as we've talked about leading into this and obviously we've had some time to do that based on Issues we've now seen, but but uh, this is the first map I really think Mouse can take. Yeah, and you you said it as well that you th well, you wanted them to wrap it up in three. I mean, we still have Overpass next, and then uh, Mirage. But that's what I'm saying. If Mouse Balls take this one, I think it may be going all the way. It really will. It'll go down to the fifth it map. Could and... go all the way. Like, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in that. But it seems like all the players are back on the server now, so we should be jumping back into this as soon as we find out the, the resume point. The thing is, to go against that theory, though, and I agree with you, statistically speaking, about the maps and the way that these two teams play and the fact that King Wind doesn't, not only not having an in-game leader and, and much that execution, don't have their coach, which they've brought in to bring that tonight either, which should potentially have an effect, although we don't know how much effect Lagish has had and how much time he's had to mold that like team. Like you said, two weeks he's but, had, right? <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm assuming somewhere in that realm is, is correct. Obviously, mm. last night it was made official, but... The the bigger thing for me is just the fact that Kingwin has been outscaling Mouse Sports in in skill in a lot of ways. So yep. if they don't wake up, you can throw theory out the window. Well, this is the chance for Mouse Sports to bounce back, winning the anti eco. Well, the eco for them, I guess, force buying with scouts yet again. They've got straight back into this and in a very strong position now. Need to make sure they don't lose this one, otherwise they're in a, a world of pain. But here we go, we're finally back in. It looks like Kingwin will be going for that outside rush I spoke about. Actually, no, it's going towards inside. So maybe the smoke's down lower ramp and seeing what they can do with it. They need to want to get a bomb down, but there's going to be some aggression from Dennis. Takes down two men, and he should be able to fall back now and tie up the round as long as he plays his cards right here. So the only thing by calling a stop is that it resets at the previous round. Fortunately, there wasn't any damage done before that stop or that resume period came in because then you could get the controversies of other teams, you know, saying this, that, and the other thing. But we go back to exactly where we were as mentioned. So it's 1-1. And it is 3-3 in terms of manpower. Lots of HP lost and blood away from the Team Kingwin, but they are getting the kills, and more specifically, it's Little D to take down Speedy this time. And he'll fall back to join his teammates. He's also picked up an M4. He's got Kevlar. As an additional smoke nade goes in. And no one pending to be a threat right now on a flank. Per se, as Nex is in the back of the site, doesn't have a lineup on the bomb planner and slips off the edge of the train, so has to hit the shot, does. They're all low enough that that scout will do it if he can find the angles. And speaking of that scout, there's also this one from Chris J, which is coming in through Z Connector. It is able to take down Michael Lilly. 
But Bombs planted for that high position, and it's now three scouts on the map to close out the round. How perfect is that? Nex is on high HP, though, which means he's got to switch to the Deagle to scream. He's also got the problem that Chris J is diffusing in that smoke, and Scream's going to ignore the first kill. <laughs> It would have been fancy oh, and a big blunder by Nex if that had happened. That was crazy. All the scouts trying to no-scope each other, trying to run past. That was a pretty fun way to finish it, but Mouse Sports do tie one up. Good effort from Kingwin, though. It was such low HP to get those two kills and the bomb down as well. Best they probably could have hoped for, and they know they're going to have next round with a full buy, and uh, that means Mouse Sports can be a little bit relaxed this time. They've got SMG's scouts, but I think we may be having a pause again because it looks like a DDoS may be back. We yeah, have to get King a stand -in. Kingwin's calling the same stop, and it's a stand-in, which is a stand-in for Scream, who's been an outstanding player well, quite, for them as of late. Quieter today, but yes, obviously you can't ever replace Scream, I don't think. There's no one who can bring that sort you of You can caliber. bring in Yell, and then you've got similar, mm. you know, complexion. Well... It's going to be difficult. It's not the ideal time to Just bring don't in a, bring in Whisper. It's not the ideal time to bring in a Merc, is it? On the third map when you're trying to close out a series. This is not the time you want this to happen. No, not at all. I'll be interested to see who they go for first stand. And obviously, they've used Kaden in the past, but now he's with SK. Nico, if he's around, would be someone else that has a lot of skill. It's weird that the DDoS goes against Scream. Or maybe it's rather not when you think about why the DDoS would go against him. Because he leads the way with seven kills right now. Who do we think he's going to come in? It could be Nico. Oh, he, it, he is back. Mind you, it would be Nico against his old team, which is weird. So he's back. Scream is back. Oh, I love this when this happens. Mm. Here's the thing, though. I mean, at some point in time, although this isn't technically paused because they've called a stop to the match, right? it still does... It, I don't know how it works in this situation for this particular league or in an admin decision, but it still takes away from team duration. Like, it's still taking away from the timeout time that Kingwin would have. So they have to make a decision by the end of that. So they've got to decide if they want to stick with Scream or if they go immediately to the stand-in. Because if this happens again, they pretty much have to call it. Well, they're continuing now. It seems like Scream will be staying on the seven. Like you said, he is doing phenomenally well. He's got seven frags after three rounds. So he obviously has been an impact player for Kingwin. Um, but... He's looking around. He's having a look at his ping. It seems like it's stabilized now. And maybe the DDoS has uh, let off for a few minutes at least. And uh, we will be going back in this one. So like I was saying before, this is a round. I, I, don't, actually, I don't like this from Kingwin. Why are they force buying this? I don't think they needed to. Um, so they got, a pretty, they got the bomb down last round. And they were looking pretty pretty going into the... Sorry, pretty doesn't really work. They were looking pretty good going into the first gun round of full AKs and stuff. And now they're going back in with Galil's, Tech 9s, and a CZ. And maybe they've got something other. So it looks like a proper set piece coming in. So they'll be trying to get the bomb down and maybe just trying to go against those scouts. And they will be doing that now. They make their way out onto the outside bomb site. Smokes are down. No exchange yet. But Gobby opens it up, takes down Rain. Fox replies though. And then all of a sudden it's a 4-4 four four situation. No sign of the bomb going down yet. CTs have rotated on the bomb site. There's going to be a lot of exchange of frags now. Chris J takes down Dennis. And it looks like there's a team kill coming in. Michael Lady takes down Fox as well. And he's going to be the last man remaining. And the CTs hold them off. And this is exactly what we're talking about. If you don't get the bomb down in those situations, you're going to be in a world of hurt in terms of the economy. And maybe this uh, DDoS situation has affected the mindset of Kingwin a little bit. They weren't going to do that before. It looked like they were full equaling. Well, this before. is the first time that Kingwin... After winning a pistol gets ecoed, we saw them avoid that in four previous pistol round wins. The problem is that now they've also given Mouse Sports a bit of a lead and economy, which they haven't had at any other game. That's almost in some ways been the saving grace to King Wins starts that they've had. Well then, now they are fully ecoed. They have a Deagle to play with. Fox is taking a tech nine, but Dennis shuts down the other Dennis straight away and uh, slows slow down that push. And it's going to be King Win just waiting. Outside the B area, you can see one player is towards Ivy as well. That's going to be Rain. Trying to find some distraction maybe before they execute onto the bomb site. Speedy down on the floor of the inside site, but it's over toward A. We shift our attention because Gobby wants to get down this Ivy corridor. Rather, Rain does. He's already made it. It's going to be attempted to be retaken from Mouse Sports. They can get that little bit of map control back, slow things down from the terrorists. We mentioned how much of a nuisance that single alleyway can be to the defense as it pulls them so far away from the site. Nexus is still going to go all the way back in the outback to spot it, which does let Scream move a little bit forward. But Chris J has made himself into a very interesting position because there it is. The oh, flag, God. But Dennis doesn't know it. So Dennis sees a movement. 
in a position where he'd expect the terrorists to be and, well, returns what Michael Lele did to his teammate onto Chris J. That one was even more unfortunate because it wasn't like it was in the heat of the moment. It was just an anticipation play that was miscalled. Bombs gets planted this time, so King would have that to work with, and now Team Kill's going to be everywhere. Yep, so that They're Urwer. CT stabilized around after that big Team Kill from Dennis, but there we go. He's four on the board for them, and that's what I was talking about with uh, King Gwyn affecting the economy so much. They get the bomb down again now, so they should be able to enter this round with a reasonable buy, and they want to start getting their pressure on now. They have got the AWP and Merkulele. We were talking before about them relying on picks quite heavily. This is what we'll see now. They'll be trying to work them out, trying to seeing, the, seeing if there's anything available in terms of a pick, but the dual-op setup does come out for mouse support, so, so that's they're going to have a lot of challenges, a lot of opportunities to get some picks here. Will he be able to do it, though? Will yet to be seen. And we can see the T's now spreading out. Orpa will be going towards the IV area with the bomb as well. Dennis comes back over to support Speedy. He's still in a quick spin position, but they've also got two more players and Gabi and Nex on the A side. Chris J has to watch Ali. And the interesting thing is that, Ga okay, now he is. Now Gabi's going to get between both the two trains looking at the connector. Because if he stays that passive on the site, then they do actually give Kingwin a bit of movement space on the entry. But Gabi pushing up. Now the only thing he has to be worried about on top of that train is ladder, but that's where Nex comes in. Instead, they don't even bother anymore. Rain was waiting, so they had the right intention. Michael Lele, though, he's going to open up the round. It's Gobby that gets caught out. So T side off making the first play, and another stop being called. <laughs> you can see the chat explode there. It's a little bit confusing now. So after getting the first pick, the T's call for a stop. It seems like some confusion comes through, and the picks open up for Mouse Sports completely. Now on a four on two, Scream and Fox to be last men, but the Orbs just doing such huge work. And. Uh, and well, Scream is the one that called the stop. He's in the corner, so Why obviously problems have issues, but his teammates called no, and I think the reason they called no is because it would restart this round. They, they already the have pick. two kills. Yeah, well, they had, or sorry, they had one kill. They had the first pick. They actually thought they could still move on with this, but unfortunately, they, they're going to lose the round, and Scream can't do anything, so they're going to have to go to the stand-in at this point, in my opinion. Such a shame. Yeah, there we go. We have a stand-in on the way, says Little D. Well... You can see Scream, yeah, it's still getting affected by the DDoS. He's got 101 ping there. Uh, it is a shame. This was turning out to be such a good game for them. And now, potentially, this could be the, the downfall of Kingwin as uh, we stop once God, again. God, I want Pasha to find them like you said he would. What's he going to do to them? Oh, I just, I assume the biceps would get a nice little feeding. <laughs> it's like giving a mouse to a snake, isn't it? Well, that slows down play once again. We are 5-1 in favor of mouse sports, of course, like I said. Mark Lely there, going for the first pick on side alley, does find it on God B. Um, but it all fell apart from there as soon as the, the pause, well, the stop was called at that stage. And uh, now we're back in the nether zone. We don't know what's going on. We're waiting. The other thing as well, by calling on a stop, I think it's a lot easier when they do go to a stand-in to shift the file over so that he'll get Scream's money, whereas a pause keeps everyone as they are. I don't think sure. you can edit the ebot file there. I could be wrong on that one, but I think that's that how that works. I guess that makes sense because it'd be easier instead of having to copy the file across, you just literally replace it, I guess. Um, yeah. But we can see we're not, we don't know who the fifth is yet. Scream has officially left the server. So he's oh, yeah, be... Scream's got to be gone. I mean, they've used Nico in the past. If, we've come, if we bring Nico in here, he's going against, obviously, his old team, Mouse Sports. But there's no allegiances there anymore. I think he's actually, is he still contracted with them? Originally, I think he was listed as bench I'm on their not, roster. I'm not sure. I couldn't possibly yeah, it might have expired. In. I think it, when he first was taken off the starting lineup, he was still contracted with Mouse Sports. So it would be interesting to see if that's still the case. Because uh, if anyone knows that, that would be cool to know. Because if he comes in as a stand-in, wouldn't there be conflict of interest? That's one way to get out of well, your we contract. Got, is, that, is that Schneider coming on? That might be Schneider. I assume it is from the name. Schnander, Schneider, yeah. That could be his uh, Smurf name. But we were going to go to a break. We won't because he's already here. So Schneider coming in, getting another Swedish player. What do you think about that? Could work. I think this this is going to be – this is when it goes all the way now. From Kingwin looking so strong in his first two maps, now you bring in a Merc. They're already very reliant on fragging and uh, not having that much team play about – this is going to be very hard for them to get back into it, especially without the, the, the proper in-game leader. They could be playing full-on pug style now. Oh, 100%. And it's on a map we already talked about that they can't really do that on at all. Mm. Not to mention, if you had a brought in Nico, I would argue that 
He doesn't have the headshot potential that Scream does, but he's definitely got individual skill that's yep. close, in my opinion. Schneider's not up there on that level, in my opinion, at all. He's not on Scream level. I don't no. think many people are. Nico is close, I think. Yeah, but... Nico's nuts. Nico's actually insane. <laughs> I wish, like, hooked on phonics, get his English better. I don't care what you have to do. Get that guy on a team that's ridiculously good, and he's going to be ridiculously good. Well, we should be... I guess we're sorting out the, the conflict files now and seeing what how that works out for them, but... Interesting thing, this is 5-1 in favor of Mouse Sports. If you have just joined us, you're in the third map. It's D-Train. We're currently experiencing DDoS issues on Scream, so he has dropped out. And uh, this is the third map. So the first map we played was Cash. We started on Cash. And we, started went, to on cash. we went to Dust 2 oh, sorry, second. So first one was, was Cash. 16-5, 16-7 for Kingwin. But now Kingwin's lost. The star player. Well, tonight he hasn't. He is a star player. There's no question. Tonight he hasn't been the star player. Mm. Last evening he definitely was. But tonight we've had Dennis as an MVP in one game and Rain in the other. So there's been some uh, some changing of pace there. But also that that not that said, Scream was third, I think, in the first map and second in the second map. Yeah, that's right. So he's yeah he's definitely been up there. So Schneider then got his work cut out for him. When they're five one down on the T side, you only see this one going one way. The time they find their feet on this. It's going to be like five or six rounds before it happens. And uh, I guess we're just waiting for the admins to sort this one out. Okay, well, they actually have just asked. There was one AFK while they got called for the stand-in, but we've just got Michael Lilly saying, what app in that exact tone? And then ready from Chris J. And now everyone's going for the unpause call. So we'll go into it. They actually did, interestingly enough, they didn't go to a stop this time as I look over at the server. They did go for a pause, but we'll see. Uh, Ebot file should have been implemented and put, and put a upon Schneider, placed upon him, bestowed with such, such great trust. Oh, here we go. And he has, he has a Galil already up, so obviously that's the case. A Galil, so does that mean he didn't get the, the screen money? It means he did. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So if he hasn't got any grenades, he's just got literally Galil and armor, nothing else, and the rest of the guys got four buys. He has armor. Well, he's got so armor. Ooh, they may have thrown it over to him. Let's see if I can figure that out. No, he started eight hundred dollars right now. You can see yeah. minus six fifty. That's all he's yeah. bought. Yeah, you're right. So he didn't get his file. So that's why. That's what we we're talking about. That's why we go to a stop in that case and not a pause. Hmm. Interesting, no less. But they've gone for it. They've called ready at this point. They pretty much have to. They've delayed the game long enough, and we'll get back into it with Mouse Sports leading by. Four rounds, a total of five. Double op setup going to be up again for Chris J and Dennis. Well, we can see them, the boys heading towards that inside bomb site. I think that is going with something very loose, very fast, getting into the inside and seeing what they can do a bit. They will have speedy waiting for them, and Dennis does open up the fragging. That foxing going to respond onto him, so it's a direct trade. Schneider's gotten forward to the bomb site. He can't find it in the flash, though. He's completely blind. He's done a lot of damage, but. No kill on the Gobby, and that allowed Chris to walk back out and take the shot into him with the op. Bomb goes down, Michael Lele, but he's alone because Chris J now finding little Dennis. Chris has to clutch this out perfectly, and Chris J now is going to put fire on that alleyway below. And a smoke I do believe I heard deployed on top of the train. In fact, no, it's not. It's on top of where that fire, in fact, was. So there's no smoke directly on top of the bomb, and Michael Lele spotted that, so he's gone back inside the tunnels. Reflash himself out. It does blind Chris J, nice. and he'll cross over the shot. Very well played by Michael Lely in the one-on-three. Yeah, that's actually a really smart play from him. He he saw he wanted to face the fake defuse. He wasn't 100 percent sure about it, but that flashbang he threw into the mix really slowed it down. And Chris J had to pay out a blind shot there. And uh, the first round that uh, Schneider rides on, he doesn't get a kill, but they do, obviously they win the round. So things looking up for King Grid all of a sudden. So Mouseports now couldn't afford the AWP, so they'll be doing a full rifle setup. Um, so this is where a potential chance for Kingwood to get back into this. Obviously, they have the AWP now. The pick did work for them before the D does come in. They did that, that work in side alley. But it seems like they're, they're slowing things right down now. And just a news update for the question I posed. I've been responded by YNK, who used to play with Nico, that he is still contracted with right. Mouse Sports. The CT's there trying to push inside, Speedy. With the Famas trying to look for that first kill, and on the back foot, you can look at the, the economy they've got. They've got Famuses, but they've got no grenades really whatsoever. They've got one smoke remaining, one diffuse kit. So this is a huge round. If King can take this one, they reset mouse ports, and they may potentially be looking at a double eco here. Which would only add to problems. Make them worse. Rain. Rain. Go away. Come again another day. He won't. The Tech Knight eventually gets the kill. Next gets back into him. 
So he gets the umbrella in place, but Nex and Gobby are doing even more damage. Now Sports, we said this was going to be their map, but it's going heavily in their favor early on. It's just down to Schneider. Welcome to the server. Welcome to the slaughter. He's up to the task, at least, by taking down Big Deep, but there's still three more members and only 33 HP. And he can only give up 32 of it. Simple math. Looking for fillers as we wait for Schneider to push forward, and he does. To the obligation of Nexus M4. Well, there we go then. That round is answered back by Mouse Sports. One we said they had to win against Double Eco. I think Kingwin actually got the opening frag as well. Rain taking down the Tech 9 shot, but they went straight into the inside bomb site, and it looked very easy for Nexus to clear up there, utilizing his superior aim to uh, find some headshots onto the B bomb site. Forces Kingwin now. Two, it looks like a full eco. They've got what, four Glocks, one Tech 9, a flashbang on McLeary. So you, you'd assume they're going to do something very fast there. There's no point messing around. Uh, but in, this, in the inside bomb site, they go. Maybe out to upper ramp instead of lower. Smoke out. That'll slow down things again. But they put four players on upper, and already they're dropping in. They're not even worried about a potential shot coming from long. But it does give the movement to Speedy with no utilities placed. The important aspect of this is that the bomb has gone down. That was the goal. That's a success. Can more kills come their way? That would make things more successful, as the English language would indicate. That means greater than initial success. Oh. Chris J, $1,500 on the flank. So, yeah, like you said, that was a, a nice round for King Win when they've got four clocks in the Tech 9. Getting the bomb down in that scenario is great for them. But what's even better is Chris J picking up a nice dump of cash there with a knife kill at the end. So, 7 2. This is where King Win can reply now. Um, I say they need to get at least five rounds this half. They're going to have any chance of locking it down on the CT. But uh, I don't really feel like it's going to happen. It looks like they may be a little bit lost. But still early days. We have uh, six rounds to go now. Let's see how this one unfolds. But uh, Max 7 now and Chris J. No picking up his uh, trusted scout. The Molotov goes over to cover off the main connection point. They've already got a player past it, though. Michael Lele's made it into t -Hell. He's waiting on the cubby as well for anyone to push forward carelessly. And Gobby almost does. He thinks about jumping to the forward train. As he sits on top of green right now, we can see him now in the x-ray vision. He's going to jump down the ladder, unfortunately, with the noise and grace of an elephant, so it's easily taken down and reversed by Michael Lilly, but that's about all they get. Chris J as well did go down, but insignificant in the fact that they'll keep three alive, and now economy is a non-factor at this point I for think sports. I think Kingwin really are going to struggle now in terms of the executions on this map. It seems like they're just trying to get out together split bomb sites but without the full smokes and the, the set flashbangs and the molotovs that we discussed before it's almost impossible to get out of those key choke points it looks like mouse boards are just taking them out before they even have a chance to get out of the main points of the map so they really need to work out what's the best way to approach this whether they stick with the rushes or whether they do a heavy pick game but mouse boards seem like they're taking them down everywhere and every angle they can dennis again taking down fox and it's gonna be a pretty simple round once again for mouse boards pokeball catching schneider it leaves next to take down Michael Lele, and he's already up on top of the blue train. Forward toward that connection point, and knowing now that they've also got that kill and speedy inside by the ladder, he doesn't have to worry about that flank. He can stay forward on rain, so the second he goes for the peak, it's not one of those cheeky battles of who's going to show who first. He's already staring at him. Well, here we go. So obviously one of the bigger rounds now. We can see the Master Watch actually going for a full rifle setup. This is the time, if you were going to do it, you do the aggressive push. You know the terrorists are trying to adapt to what you're doing. And we know, I've seen mouse sports as well. They do a great inside push with some of their teammates. They like, like to push up the inside ramp. And maybe that's what they're doing right now. We see Chris J, he's got a teammate out there. They are going to go for it. This is a perfect time to take down a terrorist very early on and see what you can find. So Chris may find some confrontation as he pushes in. Dennis is going to be waiting for him as well, though. So tense as he comes around the corner and the intensity brews evenly yeah perfect play from mouse sports i'm afraid reacting to what the teams may be doing and how they're adapting and that's what you need to do to shut down a team Watch that may not be too formidable gob's gonna have the same problem in the nade coming out at the wrong time king would now have map control on the a site not in full force yet but they've got move, movement speed and rather i should say space mm. to get toward that site speedy's the only one directly on it next is interestingly down by the ladder there's not going to be any company there so he'll be able to turn and he's got a lot of vision toward the plant position the train but rain's gone forward to this interestingly enough they're actually not looking toward the a site just yet and this is going to be 
probable because they may not expect this. Although Dennis was. He's already got the first kill on Rain. There's lots of time to deal with. So Kingwood are exploring all options, but Speedy got to control room. And now it's Fox to go against both he and Nex. And Fox going back, retracing his footsteps in toward Ivy is going to look toward outside. Initially, he knows that Speedy was in that site, and he must have heard him drop down from control because he didn't even look an initial peek in that direction. But that's what I was talking about with Nex. Once he goes for the peek at that site, he's got so much vision. So we saw the CTs pushing in so hard at the beginning of, the beginning of the round. Picked up an early frag, fell back, but as we saw, the T reaction was pretty good. Coming out Ivy, finding the kill onto God B. It came down to a, quite a tense situation. I think Rain had some great advantage positions um, on towards the CT spawn area, but he got taken down, and that was the key moment. As soon as Rain got taken down, it, they lost their positions, and it came down to that clutch from Fox at the end. Wasn't able to do anything with the two-on-one. And it, we can see now it's going to be a full-on force buy from Kingwin. Look at the, the nades they have available. Train is a map where you want to have all your smoke grenades, all your Molotovs, if you're successfully going to get onto the site and even have opportunity to kill some of the CT. So I'm not sure how they're going to approach this one. Um, it's going to be a very difficult campaign to even find a frag at this stage. You can see Dennis there. He knows he can get away with facing. He knows the economy is pretty bad for the team right now. And as soon as they did put out that force smoke that we've talked about on the right side, T right, obviously left of what we're seeing from Dennis. It was a counter smoke that deterred any movement from Kingwin forward, and that leaves Michael Lele there alone. They've rotated Rain and Fox back over toward the upper tunnels right now. That's where Schneider's going to hold the bomb, and it's not surprising they've let Schneider be that bomb carrier as he is just standing in. It does mean someone has to fill Scream's footsteps on trying to find opening picks, and Chris Jay's done exactly that for his team, as has been the case. So it's a real boot on the other foot situation as Kingwin finally find themselves behind much like Mouse Sports did in the first two maps and again they'll fall in this round as Chris J picks up kill number two and that was initially the bomb but that's recovered by Dennis but Fox is only able to find one kill before it looks like yep. everyone else will expire. So right now it doesn't look like there's a plan whatsoever. They're, they're, they're literally like I said they're trying to work picks seeing if there's anything available to them maybe they can force a play out but mouse sports are too drilled on this map it's kind of what they are perfect on they know their roles very well they, they adapt it they keep it changing every single round so if you're trying to react to what they did last round you're going to get shut down and they're just trying to they haven't got an S set piece to go out to that's what you need to be falling back to if the picks aren't coming to you you need to just be getting, getting the bomb down at least and then you can have the opportunity to use your individual aim and performance to uh, get yourself into the round but now another force by and uh, this round is going horribly in so far. Speedy looks like he's going to be pushing the inside bomb side again. Nexus put himself above the smoke on top of the bomb train, but it also means that he's exposed, and that means Schneider can get the kill. Chris has gone back to the AUG. We saw that come out on Cash very early on. He actually picked up two and a half kills. He got 80 damage off the third player with it. But Kingwin finally with a round and working in their favor. Speedy the last that's alive. He's at the bottom of the ladder toward control room, and as they go for the plant, he goes for the peak, and Schneider's waiting, so... That's a pretty good round for Schneider when he comes in. Yep, very fast, execute onto the side there. Pretty simple stuff. I think they got a couple of basic smokes done as they run out. Um, but frags went in their favor that time. Chris J, who's still picking up the org again, didn't really do much of it. But now, interesting enough, Speedy's going to finish things off with the auto sniper. We know this one of the best maps for this gun. A lot of smoke spamming can come into it. And it looks like he'll be playing the inside bomb side as well. It's probably the best place he could be going with that. But the T's may be doing something a little bit more methodical now. The smokes have gone into the A bomb site. And they will be coming out of the, IV, uh, the pop dog area as well. First frag comes in for rain. Takes next, gives them sight mobility as Mc Michael Lele is going to find Chris J. Gob, the only response kill so far for Mouse Sports. And Fox is smartly going to cover off that ladder behind. That takes away the flank potential. Rain now getting speedy. It's a trade kill. The auto sniper only able to pick up one. And the op to close it. 11 4 is the half. That's better than what Team Kingwin did on the first two halves. It was 10 5 both times in the previous maps. Yep. So three rounds for Michael Lele there and two for Rain. So those guys really stepping it up. If they can find that kind of form going into this, obviously I think they need the pistol. They need every bit of help they can get going to the second half. This isn't their proper lineup. Schneider's come in as a Merc. Uh, if you've just joined us, Scream has been DDoSed to Buggery, and he is uh, being replaced by Schneider. And he, this is, they're ultimately playing as a pug now. So the CT setups will be very difficult. They need to find some synergy very quickly. Getting the pistol will give them a nice bed of rounds at least to not have to force by and be under pressure straight away. As we started off in halftime number two, Michael Lele, Schneider, Dennis, they're going to be covering off outer. Chris J. Speedy heading down toward Ivy. Gobby's going to wait, but Rain is finding the first kill. 
It's the dinner. It's Big D. Mouse Sports Dennis trying to find his way toward dinner to see what's up. What's going on? Give me a read. Schneider kicks the peek at Ivy. He does see an eight come out, so they know there's a presence, but they haven't spotted how many players just yet. Now they do, and they're going to fall off it. They don't even want to take this fight, so Schneider heads to hell, and they're going to work on to him. Nice first shot, dropping the bomb down, but it's quickly recovered as Gobby getting the trade kill. So Michael Lele knows they're in that direction. He doesn't know if he wants to throw his nade to the left or the right. He doesn't need to put it either direction because Rain has picked up two phenomenal kills before that can even detonate. And it's left to Speedy to come around from green. Rain in control. Nearly caught him with the reactionary flick, but it's Michael Lele again to close out the round. And Kingwin continue with the trend of picking up every single pistol tonight. Yeah, there we go. So Rain started off the inside bomb site, managed to get that amazing one ball onto uh, one of the T's there. And then he actually rotated to heaven on outside. It's an interesting play from him. After the read came in from Ivy that he could fall back, he got up there and picked up two more frags of his own. So that all came down to Rain, and he got he secured the the pistol, but interesting enough though, Mass Sports for once not buying scouts, they get a couple of P250s, maybe looking to play the long game this time. I guess they didn't get enough kills to even justify it, they couldn't even buy a scout, it was, the option wasn't even there. And so they're gonna go down ladder, as it appears, they're grouping at the top of it, two players already down. They're actually splitting up, which takes the bomb to the inner bomb site, smoke out to allow the entry and potentially confuse Kingwin, but there is no confusing a team that slaughters you that quickly. Bring the gauntlet out. It's six for Kingwin. They're slowly bringing back this lead. They'll have one more round with guns before the true test will face them. Well, you never know. We're going to see Tech Nines. Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know. I think I wouldn't advise it. I wouldn't, especially given the circumstance. You know you're playing against a pug. Why take that risk and allow and them to get back into don't the game? Throw it away. Exactly. Do I, why even allow them to have that chance? Play the percentages, and this is obviously a smart play for Mouse Sports. Sacrifice this round and then look to the, the bigger picture. Schneider's going to look from red in toward main. As aggressive as jumping across the other train. That naked bounce. If it bounces back far enough, it'll do damage, but they get away from it. And it's going to work out still, though, for Michael Lele, who's picked up one, two, three, all with SMG. So $1,800 for him as Chris J tries to salvage some pride. But pride's not really the issue right now. It's the fact that King would have got all three of those anti ecos, but the weapons will come out. And will there be an upgrade from these SMGs? I don't think they need to. I think this is the round you do something very aggressive. You, I'd say I send those two SMGs pushing the inside ramp. Uh, or potentially towards uh, uh, Ivy as well. That could be quite a cool option for them. They want to try and find a quick frag with them. You can see Rain is going to be pushing in himself. He has got the M4. So where are these guys going to be going towards with those? What's the most viable position they can play? Flash coming through, though. Does catch Dennis just a little bit. He's able to dodge it, but he has to turn around on the second. Fortunately, the fire's out, so they can't push through with his back turn. Next doesn't give a shit if he can see him or not. Michael Lele finally getting a response, though. Another SMG kill. And this is the thing, without upgrading, they're going to still be able to bring out weapons at, in the next round. They may actually still pick up this one as Rain gets on top of the train and just barely over the smoke will take down Gobbeat. Dennis, meanwhile, though, has planted the bomb. So advantage to him in the one-on-one -on -one because he can just bait this out so carefully. But Rain has guessed correctly on where he's going. And Rain, two, only two. It seems like he got more than that because of how much impact he had. But he wins the round for them. One of the best clutches in Europe. You won't see many be players better than him in those situations. And it was actually nice to point out that Schneider got two MP7 kills there. So making that, utility, uh, making that buy work for them, the, the MP7, the P90s, they pushed into the main entrance and actually got away with it as well. That's a huge round to win. And that's four in a row now for Team Kingwin. There is some light now. As Mouse Sports force up, and they do get a, a nice buy in terms of equipment, but they have an MP7 and a Galil. And uh, now they have the, the AWP out. This could get really interesting. And it looks like the orb's going to go very close inside as well. Michael Ely going in for the aggressive shotgun orb style. But it is Little Lee to take down big this time. Chris J will get Fox. That's at hell. So it allows him to push up the alley. Now they can force out the side. And next... Found Dennis. I thought that was a stray bullet from Chris that actually got that kill for a second, but it wasn't. It's left to rain to try and clutch again, and that's not so easily done this time. Michael Lilly, one on three. Again, you talked about his aggressive forward op. I had to go a little more passive before he could find a kill, and now he's smoked off at the alley. For wow. the exit, what a shot. That was crazy reaction from Michael Lilly as he takes down Speedy, and he's actually going to go for it, perhaps feeling confident on the back of that. 48 HP to do it. Hasn't been able to swap over to an AK just yet. Does get a flash forward onto A1, but as the Molotov lands on the bomb, the shot will come in from Godby.
So Chris Jay getting some big opening frags there. Three of his own into the bomb site. This is obviously where it gets really interesting. If the CTs can win this round, they reset the money for Mouse Sports. And uh, if they lose this one, it could be the window of opportunity for Mouse Sports to close out the series because they will be on a double eco, presumably after this one. So obviously one of the biggest rounds in terms of uh, this map. So let's see how it goes down. The CTs maybe doing something a little bit more passive here. I don't see so much. We've got a scout on Schneider. So it's be very difficult for them to hold off this assault from the terrorist side. And that first smoke that bounces up the ramp allows the push to come in so much more comfortably for rain doesn't necessarily mean you can go through it but you'll be able to hear the footprints and in fact if you throw it a little bit further right you can leave a gap that's very favorable for the ct player regardless the cts at a are doing the job of killing off everyone gob b and dennis the last two that are alive right now both with ak's both with head armor not both with nades though it's only dennis that has a flash look at gobby's position HA. he's got all the way to the back tracks it's not going to be enough though he had to, someone who made another frag they could have done something with it he got all the way to this position undetected. Get Dennis. Oh, he's got rain, and Dennis doesn't hear the call fast enough, so now he picks up two. And Michael Lele is low on HP. It's, this is actually doable for Godby. So two already and two to go as he looks down toward Red. He's already tagging up, though, from Schneider. And Schneider knows exactly where he was, but not where he is because he's run away to retrieve that bomb on the back end of Ivy. Snyder's going to fall back into Z. He may think that he's gone towards CT. So this could work out for Gob to get a bomb plant because Snyder's going to do exactly that and work into his own spawn. In fact, he really thinks he's gone CT because he uses the ramp to set up for a headshot. Now they hear the plant coming in, and Schneider has to give up position. So Gob has this to work with. Again, Michael Lele is very low on health, so they need to play this together and make sure they can get the trade kill. The problem is that Michael Lele is going to pop while he's exposed, and luckily Schneider's already nailed the shot over top of the train. King win to get the defuse. Nine rounds now, but not yet back into this fully. I was actually watching Gobby that whole round. As soon as I saw him have that sort of positioning control, getting towards the back tracks, you knew it was going to be chaos for the CTs. Like he said, he got that first kill. There was no time for the reaction to come back for them, so he picked up another as well. Got the bomb down as well, and that might actually save them because this it means they can do a pretty decent force by this round. AKs, Tech Nines, full utility as well so i don't think the ct will be expecting this so much but you can see their economy is not great rain is picking up the max seven this time as well it looks like mouse will to do a full execution on the outside bomb site perhaps that's judging by their buy that'd be the most sensible thing to do but let's see how this one goes where are they actually currently heading making their way out into main straight away and no lots of smokes around. yeah lots of smokes already down they've covered off the gap from red to green which means that they can't spot it without moving into hell that's what next finds fox trying to do and schneider will get a response kill though it there wasn't a fully third smoke to go out on top of the bomb train, so they could still jump above it, and Schneider's found himself a hefty amount of kills. In fact, not quite the full handful. All five fingers not needed to count, but his teammates to pick up the, S the rest, and now they're on double digits and only two behind Mouse Sports. Again, they've got the first two maps. Absolutely. So now it seems like they're... Schneider's picking it up as well. He seems like he's actually playing really well for them. 12 frags for him, and uh, he only joined pretty late into the game, so he's stepping it up. Um, but there we go. Ten rounds now for Team Kingwin. Having a look over the economy for the terrorist side. The Lost Bone is playing in their favor. They've got the bomb down a couple of times as well. So it's a pretty reasonable buy. Chris J is going to be on Tech 9. So is Next, actually. So they're getting into the realms of they just probably want a full eco and go in with uh, the percentage chance, having the, the full buys, utilize the full execution they have, take advantage of the fact that Kingwin are a, a pug here. So... That's what I'd be advising, but here we go. Another execution on the outside bomb side, getting out pretty quickly. Next is so dangerous in this position. But what can he do alone? Again, they've smoked off between the two trains that enables him to push up. Does he cut the gap and head to hell? He may not. He's actually looking to push forward of the bomb. And that means Fox now knows it, so he can get away from hell and try and come into support, and he does perfectly as he takes down Gompi. Second shot, not as successful, but it's Schneider to pick it up because the damage was dealt onto Speedy. And Chris J with the Tech 9, one on four. One, two, three, four. Down he goes. So then, the timing not quite King Gwyn actually looking like they've got a chance here with uh, the stand-in. They get one more round, they tie things up, and look at, over the, at the T side. They're considering a Zeus coming out for next now. Why is that happening? <laughs> He was uh, favoring the Zeus yesterday, remember, on Dusty? Yeah, that was slightly different because they were <laughs> against Torpedo. This might be a misplay. An actual misbuy for once. I was just quite funny considering he was buying that for fun. a lot. So was Speedy. They tried to sit and smoke numerous times to use them. But here we go. The T is going very fast inside with the full eco this time. A couple of pistols in their hands. But Rain is ready for them. 
and he does very well by himself. And there's the smoke being slightly more to the right. That time, Rain not pushed fully up against it, though. So he spotted in reverse. Snyder's going to hit Chris J, though, to open it up again. So you're dead right. He's definitely come alive. The former Fnatic, former property member. And he's done the task to allow Rain to close it. We're tied back up. Kingwin, this is impressive considering it's a map that required more execution. Now, it is CT side for them. Well, yeah, Pissar, I think that's what they needed to do. They, need, in. they just needed to get enough rounds to justify their CT performance. Now it's currently 8 1. And then on the CT side, they've drawn things out. And again, we can see Chris J. He's going to get the AWP, is what we're talking about. This is something perhaps they should have done before instead of forcing so many uh, difficult buys. But now they should be able to work the picks a little bit better and exploit the pug mentality. Fox doesn't realize. Now he did. He definitely saw him that time. I was going to say, didn't realize that Gobby was that close to him. And spraying into the smoke, he finds two. He can safely, or at least attempt to reload. As Rain was there, but Rain got taken down. They close it again. It's going to be desperate times now for the T's. Fox They're in a position to force. Okay, they go to Tech Nines. That's smarter. I do agree with it. Fox is actually one of my favorite main players on the on train. He's so good at picking up one or two frags. He's not the flashiest stuff. He never is in the clutch situations. But as a support player, he always finds one or two kills. He's so reliable out there. And uh, he seems to find kills out of nowhere. But here we go. Like you said, it's going to be the force buy. But they keep 2k in the bank, which justifies considering the loss bonus. So it looks like they will be heading towards the inside area again. As we said, they're actually maybe going to drop down the bomb's inside, but the other guy's trying to get a distraction. Rain opening up on Chris J. Schneider was the last one into the server by something, I think, like four or five rounds, and he now yeah. leads the team in kills at 19. If you combine that with Scream stats, who had seven when he left. Yeah, you're right. That's pretty crazy. 28 kills in just 25 rounds for that slotted player, but Kingwin are just absolutely touching distance, demolishing though. Mouse Sports right now. Another swift entrance. Now, that, again, was an anti eek well... Eco forced by with the Tech Nines, but Eco nonetheless, it was definitely quick. Yeah. Painless, well, perhaps. They were, this is the round they were looking to. This is the response, the double orb setup. Next takes one, Dennis takes one. Triple orb, by the way. Triple orb, I didn't see that. A triple orb setup. Is this the right response in D Train? If the CTs go a little bit is aggressive this like they have real been, life? they go a little bit aggressive like Rain is going to now. This could be a hell of a big problem for them. Well, they find a pick with one of them. They've lost an AK in the process, so it's an AK and three ops, and two of them now getting kills. Chris J's won't. The one that you might expect to find the kill. That's Rain going it's aggressive that again, doesn't. though. That's as soon as I said, as soon as he goes aggressive, they can't do anything about that. It's close range, and he got completely locked down. Three and on three now. Interestingly enough, he's going to rotate all the way around toward main and go for a retake in the alleyway. Bomb's been planted. This round's actually looking better for Mouse Sports because Dennis picked up yet another rather next. Excuse me, picked up yet another kill. But that's cancelled out that by Michael Lilly, and here's the flank, but he's looking directly at Rain. Dennis read that like a book. Not a very good book. Twilight. <laughs> As now Michael Lilly is going to try and find the last two remaining players with his ops. So it really is a round of the ops, and he walks out. How does that work? How does three ops work, and they've recovered two of them? I don't know. It's really strange. It's like the aggressive play style, like I said, Kingwin have been employing and getting people very close to the choke points. You'd assume that wouldn't work for our sports, but it has. And... It's not over yet, though. Obviously, Kingwin built a pretty decent bankroll in these last few rounds. And I said, that's actually, after the buy, they still have like 8K in their pockets. So they are fine for the rest of the game now. It's actually uh, the T side is going to be struggling a little bit more. But here we go. It looks like another very fast round. Dennis going for this opening pick, seeing what he can do with it. But the T's are spreading out again, trying to exploit the pug mentality of Team Kingwin. Can they find any little mistakes from them and maybe some overfacing? Schneider, though, opening up on the Dennis. He had an AWP. That's an amazing frag from him. Nexon's is back with some jewelies as well. What is going on? This is a crazy round. Uh, but a great kill from Nexon, nonetheless. Tuli uli ulis. Fox has pushed himself up behind the boxes. Now, okay, that's that's the key thing. Is now that the teammates deployed the smoke, he's actually got that more, much more room to breathe in case someone did pop out the ladder. So we see him already pushing back down the wall just a little bit further, not having to worry about his gun protruding forward and can focus more on the main connector. And without a smoke out for Michael Lilly, he can actually fire into that, but he's going to change his angle just a little bit. But Fox no longer has that smoke, and as he goes for the first shot, Chris just walks out. It's that easy to take from ladder when there's not a support system or a crossfire in place. But Snyder, he's still going to pick up one, make it two, swapping to the pistol. This guy's been absolutely crazy. Welcome back to the world of competition, Schneider. That's a four-man for him as well. Now a three-on-one situation. They take it to match point. 
That's amazing stuff by Schneider. Four huge kills as the Merc and the server as well. How has he stepped up so well to the plate here? And that's going to knock the confidence down in Mouse Sports to absolutely nil. They won the last round and they go into this one with next to no money as well. K Team Kinwin in t touching distance and making it to group one of the PGL. Amazing scenes here. Two rounds to go. Do you think Mouse Sports have what it takes to win this round? It's going to take such hard work and some huge play. Chris J has got the scout though and it looks like an inside rush will be coming in. God B leading the charge. Oh, Gob in the smoke. Rain has no idea he's there. So it is going to be a great shot for him to go in toward the site, but it's all trading back. Five kills coming out so quickly you couldn't even keep up, even if you could read fast enough to finish Twilight by the time this this game's over. And it is going to be Dennis to take down Chris J. Back to a two-on-two. -two. The op is up for Michael Lele. He's down to 31 HP, but again, it is an op, as I just mentioned. So all he needs is position to get one shot off. Dennis is taken down next. It is match point, and it is a one versus two. Dennis needs to bait this out. He's not even going to do it. King winner going to make this happen, and, and uh, negative screen plus Schneider. Just kidding. Kappa. Wow. Schneider, 26 frags. Didn't even play all the rounds. That's insane. That's like one of the sickest performances we've ever seen. That's amazing.